Jane here, and welcome to the video blog for the release of Ink and Bone, which is the first novel in my new Bright Library series. I realize it's flipped, but it's a camera thing, really. I can't do anything about it. Um, this book had a really long and interesting journey, and I thought you might want to hear about it. The series itself started with an idea I had and sometimes the way ideas come to me, they come to me as visual images. And sometimes they come to me as situations. Sometimes it's a character. In this particular, in this particular series, it came to me as a combination of a character and a visual image. Uh, and the visual image was of this man in this long cloak robe standing in front of a city under siege and the gates parting to let him in with a, with a giant army standing on the other side, ready to descend on the city. And I thought, why would someone let someone into a city that's about to be attacked? It was a good, good question. Was he a treaty messenger? You know, I, I went through a lot of different permutations, but uh, I really wanted to talk about a lot of things in this book. And one of the things I wanted to talk about were the books themselves. And I thought, what if he's there to rescue someone or something? And what if that is a an agreement that both sides have that he can come in and do that, but only that? Uh, that was an interesting situation to me, and I began to build a story around it. Uh, the interesting thing was about that process, it wasn't easy at all. I wrote the beginning of this book starting probably about 10 years ago. I probably wrote it 20 times in various ways with various characters from various points of view in various worlds because I kept trying to figure out, is it a science fiction story? Is it a fantasy story? Is it Young adults, is it adult? What am I trying to do with this story? Uh, and because it's not immediately obvious in this situation whose story it is or what kind of story it is. So uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized what I had to do was set up a world. And world building in young adults, you know, I I've mainly written contemporaries with the exception of Prince of Shadows, which you can see behind me. Um, Prince of Shadows was world building in a sense in that I had to recreate a world that no longer existed. But I wasn't really recreating a fantasy world either. Um, the world of Verona in Shakespeare's time was very real. And so, you know, in that sense, Shakespeare was writing contemporary fiction. Uh, and so therefore, even though I was writing historical fiction, the tone was a little bit of the same kind of contemporary that I'd been writing at least in my mind. But for this, I had to build an entire world from scratch. And I began to really research and try to figure out what I wanted to say in it, what I wanted to do in it. And it took many years. Like I said, I put things in, I took things out, I, I, I put characters in, I threw them out. Uh, I thought for a long time that the character of Christopher Wolfe who, when you, uh, when you get a chance to read the book, doesn't actually appear until, I would say, a third of the way through the book, or thereabouts a quarter of the way through the book. I thought he was the main character, but then I realized he wasn't. He is an interesting cipher. He is a figure of mystery. And so I, I, I decided I needed someone else to, to talk about. And that led me to eventually the discovery of the world of the Great Library of Alexandria, which I have always had an idea about. I mean, I think most of us who've heard of the Great Library of Alexandria and that it burned and so many books were lost had an idea about it. But I really didn't understand what the Great Library was. And in part two of this video blog, uh, coming up in the next week, I will be talking more about the Great Library of Alexandria. At least it was a real place that really existed and um, was a fa as fascinating as any fantasy world you could possibly create. Uh, 
so and it's not what you expect so I, I'll be talking a little bit more about that in part three of my video blog I'll be talking more about the ideas behind this story and particularly the kind of big ideas that I had that I really wanted to put into this series um, and I, I think that's it for today but I'll be answering questions, so if you want to put some comments on this this blog and ask me questions or even email me questions, I can do a little Q&A question and answer uh, on the later blogs. So um, please feel free to do that. And uh, meanwhile, thank you. I'm Rachel Hain, and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Don't forget, Ink and Bone. Ink and Bone releases on July 7th in the U.S., July 23rd in the U.K., and uh, and I believe that uh, it's going to be available pretty much everywhere, so look for it. It looks really pretty. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. Um, look at that spine. Has that got the best spine ever? Thank you, Penguin. It's amazing. That's all I've got for you today. But I will talk to you soon. And uh, meanwhile, enjoy the website, exploreenterthelibrary.com, where I have a lot of great information that's there and going to be launching over the next few weeks leading up to the release of the book. And uh, also, don't forget, on July 20th, we're, or sorry, June 20th, we're going to be having a, uh, a lovely live event with Whiskey, Wine, and Writing. You can Google them. And it's going to be an online event where I'm going to do a live reading from that book before anybody gets it. So, uh, and also we'll be launching the book trailer on the same day. So please join us then and, and join me here later for part two video blog of Ink and Bone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.